welcome back to the channel. My name is Rochelle from Rochelle Handmade Designs. And in this video, we are doing a pattern review for my Easter dress utilizing New Look 6694. Now, before we get started, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe button, and also turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into this pattern review. But before I say anything any further, I want to say Happy Easter. I had all intentions on posting this video for Easter Sunday, which today is Easter Sunday. Well, the day before Easter Sunday. Today's Saturday. Yeah, today's Saturday. So I am doing this video um, and I want to go ahead and do this video because it's raining outside right now with a little bit of sunlight, okay? So because it's raining outside, I cannot get my photos done today. I'm gonna try to get my photos done tomorrow on Easter. If I'm unable to get my photos done tomorrow for Easter Sunday, then I will go ahead and post the photos when I do my March sewing make. So you'll see all the photos there if I'm unable to get photos done by, you know, Wednesday when I do my What You Working On Wednesday. All right, so without further ado, let's go ahead and get right on into this pattern review, starting with the pattern description. All right, so the pattern description for this pattern is a Mrs. Wrap dress with button bodice, full sleeves, gathered tiered skirt, or an A-line skirt if you do view B, um, and that's view B option. So that's the pattern review. Now, I love this pattern. Let me put it like that, but it's a lot of work, which I'm going to take you behind the scenes of me doing this, uh, this dress here shortly. So let's go ahead and get into the skill level for this pattern. All right, so on, I believe the Simplicity website, it says that the skill level, because now Simplicity is starting to tell the skill level on the website, I believe it says that it is the average pattern. Do I agree? Yes, I agree. So this pattern almost took your girl out, okay? <laughs> I'm not gonna even lie. Um, but you guys know I do like a challenge. I And the reason why I created this dress is simply because I like to go above the normal five, six pattern pieces, sometimes no more than eight. When I'm doing things for holidays and special events or whatever, Easter is one of those things where I like to be uh, dressed up and classy and everything to go to church. It's been three years since I created a uh, um, dress to wear to church for Easter. Um, you guys know the pandemic two years ago, um, I moved as well. And then on top of that, the last time I created an Easter dress, was 2019 um, and I'll go ahead and put pictures of that of me creating an Easter dress from 2019 and that's the last time I did it so I felt really good excuse me I said felt really good to create an Easter dress to wear Sunday and it was amazing it felt really really good to create this dress to wear Sunday all right, um, let's go ahead and get into the notions used. So the notions used for this pattern, um, you need your thread, of course, and you need six five eight inch buttons. Those are the notions that you need in order to create this dress. Fabric used. So the fabric used for this um, dress is, I just basically use cotton fabric, okay? And I'm gonna tell you the reason why. So if you look at the back of the pattern, it calls for, I believe, seven yards of fabric, if not eight, okay? Um, <laughs> and I purchased nine yards of this fabric. I'm gonna put the name of the fabric up, don't worry. It is a broadcloth fabric from Joann's. The name of this fabric is called Artesian Gold. I did not want a bright yellow. I didn't want something that was gonna be see-through. So I chose a darker mustard color in order to do this dress. So that is the fabric used for this pattern. Pattern pieces. So let's go ahead and get into the pattern pieces that you need. It is a total of 17 pattern 
pieces. I know you guys are like, Ooh, Lord. All right, so if you guys remember from my um, sit down with Talisha during our grand finale of hashtag sewing five and below, we were talking about how I always get on to Talisha. Well, I used to get on to Talisha about how many pattern pieces <laughs> for a dress. So now it's time for y'all to get on me and be like, Rochelle, 17 pattern pieces. Yes, it was 17 pattern pieces in order to create this dress. Talisha said it best during that sit down that it's okay to sew something with so many pieces every once in a while. Not all the time will I be doing a pattern with so many pieces because I do not have the time to do so. All right, which I will get behind the scenes. You will see the craziness behind the scenes here shortly. But the pattern pieces that you need is 17 total. I'm gonna tell you which I could literally just show you from a clip, but I'm just gonna basically tell you that you're gonna need your bodice front, right front, bodice left front, the back. You will also need the front bend. You'll need the um, bodice side front, the bodice side back. You'll need pattern piece seven, which is your tie ends, pattern piece number eight, which is your back facing, pattern piece number nine is your sleeve, pattern piece number 10 is your sleeve stay, which is something um, that was different for me. Pattern piece 11 is your guide for your sleeve stay. Pattern piece number 12 is the first tier, 13 is the second tier, 14 is your third tier, 15 is your fourth tier. And then pattern piece number 16 was the ruffle. Pattern piece number 17 was the tight belt. So it's a total of 17 pattern pieces that you need in order to create this dress. But I do want to mention about the sleeve stay, which is, was, which is what I will mention here shortly. But those are the pattern pieces that you need in order to create this dress. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about pattern sizing so the sizing is just one pattern size i believe it's 6 to 18 on the pattern or maybe 6 to 20. i'll put it up on the screen if i'm incorrect on that pattern sizing but i believe that the pattern sizing is either 6 to 16 or 6 to 18. i'll put it up on the screen so it's just one size the size that i cut was a size 16 and i had to make adjustments i made adjustments to the bus I also made adjustments to the waist. I did not need to make any adjustments to the hip because it's flowy. So those, that, those are the things that you have to do if it's something that you really want to create. So just be mindful of sizing up if you need to. Okay, so that's the size that I cut. Let's go ahead and talk about modifications. Did I make any modifications to the pattern? No, outside of sizing the pattern up, I did not make any, any, any modifications to this pattern. Let's talk about first time experiences. Um, did I have any first time experience? Yes. So the first time experience is actually doing a sleeve stay. Now, let me rephrase sleeve stay. So normally when I do a sleeve stay, it's basically adding fleece to the um, shoulder seam of a sleeve so it can stay in place, right? This sleeve stay is like putting a sleeve inside of a sleeve, which was the first time of me doing that. So you have your sleeves, you make your pleats for your sleeve, which is pattern piece number 10. Pattern piece number 11 is the guide for your sleeve stay, which is you place that right sides together and drop it into your sleeve. And then you have another piece at the bottom, which you will see here, which is your sleeve stay, which I figured was really different than what I have ever done. So that is my first time experience. Now that we talked about my first time experience, let's go ahead and talk about, did it look like the photos or the drawing on the pattern envelope? My answer is yes, it did. And to be honest with you, I think I looked better in my dress, honestly, than what they show on the model. Sometimes you cannot look at the front of the pattern. You have to go with your gut of looking at the line art of the pattern okay but that's what yeah it, it looks like <laughs> the pattern uh the photos and the drawing on the pattern envelope let's talk about the instructions are the instructions easy to follow yes 
I was surprised that it is easy to follow. Um, but when I show you behind the scenes here shortly, you would see how I messed up and had to recreate everything all over again. Oh, it, yeah. I'm going to leave it like that because I don't want to give too many details because it's some hilarious, hilarious moment behind the scene. But yes, the instructions are easy and easy to follow. Let's go ahead and get into my likes and dislikes for the pattern. Likes. I love everything about the pattern in creating this dress. Dislike. Rough foes. Oh my goodness. Um, creating so many tears. Um, if you are not ready to create so many tears, do not, do not, do not create this dress when you only have a couple of days to sew it together. Okay. Don't do that. <laughs> All right. So I had a total of four days to create this dress. I believe it was three or four days. You'll see it in behind the scenes to create this dress. And I was fighting against time when it came to the ruffle part of the dress. It was already enough that I had to t redo not the entire bodice, but I had to recut not once, but two times the uh, right front and the left front. Reason being is because like I have mentioned in so along, if you do not look at the cutting layout and you cut the pieces the wrong way, you forgot to put your, the wrong side of your pattern facing up and the right side of your pattern facing down, you can easily um, sew the right side to the wrong side, which is what happened not once but twice. I did it twice because I was not paying attention the first time I recut it. And then the second time I sewn the interfacing to the wrong side. So I had to <laughs> cut it a third time and that's when everything clicked and everything um, was fine. Now I know you're saying, well, Rochelle, when you look at the behind the scene, I could have left it the opposite side to where the buttons, which you do not see buttons on my bodice right now because I'm going to take it off and do it um, uh, here shortly because I just completely finished the skirt and attach it. I just need to do the buttons, which I'll do that tonight and wash it tonight so I can wear it tomorrow on um, Easter because I'm recording this Saturday afternoon. Okay. Um, but anyway, what I was saying is basically um, that the dislike is just the tears. That was the only thing that I like. And it's long. So I did have to do a modification. Let me go back to modification. So I did do modifications and I did write it on my pattern instructions. So I made adjustments to the ruffles and the tears. So tier one, I removed, um, I removed an inch and a half from the top of tier one and tier two. So it was six inches. I removed it to make the tier four and a half inches. So an inch and a half on tier one and tier two. Tier three, I removed two inches from the top. Tier four, I removed two inches from the top as well. well so tier three and tier four, two inches, tier one and tier two, one and a half inches removed from the top because I wanted my entire dress to be 46 inches. And if I did not remove those tiers, my dress would have went all the way down to my ankles and I did not want that look. So that's why I removed that. Another thing that I did is for the ruffles, I removed a half an inch from the top of the ruffle in order to get two and a half inches when it's sewn together instead of that three inch. So that was another modification that I made, but that's all the modifications that I made and that's the only dislikes that I had. All right, so let's talk about what I sew this again. Yes, yes, yes. I am sewing this again. I do have plans to sew it again in a solid color. Um, one adjustment that I will make for doing this is to lengthen the bodice to make it a shirt instead of a skirt. So basically I would go all the way down to where you supposedly attach the skirt. I would do that and then make it, I want to say from the waist, an additional five inches for me um, in order to make it a top and just have it as a top and then just sew um, a A-line skirt or two-tier skirt and add a waistband. Something like that would be perfectly fine. That's what my plans are to sew this again. I wouldn't want to do it. Well, I wouldn't say I wouldn't do it. I'm, I don't know, but I do want to do it in a solid instead of a print 
and see how I like that. All right, but eventually I might actually do it in a print as well. But yes, I would sew it again. Let's talk about what I recommend this pattern to others. Of course, I would recommend this pattern to others, but I will say that recommending this pattern to others, I highly advise if you're a beginner, try other patterns first because I'm not a beginner. I am super advanced to sewing. However, I even tripped up a couple of times on this and it's not trip up as in instructions or anything. It was basically not paying attention. So that was my trip up for this pattern. But yes, I would recommend this, but I would definitely not recommend it for beginner sewing. And when I say beginner sewing, if you just strictly knew less than two years in sewing, I would not recommend this to you. But if you've been sewing for roughly three to five years, I think you can tackle this pattern. You will have probably a lot of, you know, questions and comments about the sleeve stay, the sleeves, and also um, doing the um, the ties. You may actually have problems doing the ties. Now, mine right here, I do have a bead that I want to put here, um, and I'm going to sew a bead onto this portion. I have my beads um, together. I have it that I need to put in. I'm gonna put it on all the finishing touches uh, right after I finish recording this. But yes, I would recommend it to others. Let's go ahead and talk about my pattern rating. So my pattern rating for this pattern, I am actually going to give it a 4.5 out of five. Reason why is because I could not stand the tear section of it gathering. This is a great pattern. I am going to do it again, but I'm only taking a half of a point off for the sake of the tears. You will be doing tears forever, the ruffle. So be prepared to sit in front of the TV and pull up, <laughs> you know, the gathers for the ruffles for the tears. Cause it's a lot, it's a lot. And I did not plan very well for that. I will plan next time I do a ruffle dress or a skirt or whatever. I will plan for that, but this time I did not. But that is my pattern review. So now let me go ahead and take you to the behind the scenes of what it was like creating this dress. All right, so today we're gonna do behind the scenes of my Easter dress. So this is the pattern that I'm using. And before you guys get on me and say, Rochelle, you guys just did hashtags sewing five and below and you pulled out a pattern with so many pieces. I like to change it up, okay? <laughs> and because Easter is one of those um, events that I like to celebrate here in my homes, um, I wanted to do something and sew a nice Easter dress. So this is the pattern that I am chose is New Look 6694, which is last year's spring summer pattern. When it came out, I already knew that I wanted to sew it um, for the spring, all right? Um, so first things first. I am doing view A. Now this look extremely long, so I am gonna be doing some hacking to this pattern, um, and you'll see that here shortly. So let me go over to the instructions. So for the um, instructions for view A, the one that I'm doing, I need a total of 17 pattern pieces, okay? And, the way that they have this, the pattern pieces, it's the tiers that will scare you, okay? The tiers, there are four tiers to this. You have tier one through four, which is pattern piece number 13, 14, 15. Um, so you have, I'm sorry, you have 12, 13, 14, and 15, which are your tiers, and then 16 is your ruffle. I am going to add the tie belt, so that's why I need 17 pattern pieces. Now, when you look at the cutting layout for view A, it's a lot of pattern pieces that you have to cut on the fold. So I did measure my pattern pieces for my tiers, and um, these are the numbers that I got. So basically I measured from the top to the bottom and then subtract the seam allowance. Since the seam allowance is five eighths of an inch, you have five eighths of an inch at the top and five eighths of an inch at the bottom. So that means when you add five eighths plus five eighths, it's an inch and a quarter. So I had to remove that amount to see how long that tier would be um, once the seam allowance is taken out. So I'm gonna show you the tiers quickly and then give you some behind the scenes stuff, all right? 
So for tier 12, which is my first tier and my second tier. So the height of the tier without taking seam allowance out is seven and a quarter. Well, I took five eighths from the top and then five eighths from the bottom, which is an inch and a quarter. So it gave me a height of six inches. Now, um, when I add all the tiers together, six plus six plus nine plus 12, right? I ended up getting six plus six is 12 plus nine is 21 plus 12 is 33. So almost half of my dress is 33 inches. I'm only 5'5", five five, which means I'm 65 inches. If the bodice portion is just that tall, which the bodice portion looks to be 17 and a half. So 33 plus 17 and a half is 50 and a half, which means it's too long. It's too long for what I want, right? So I measured from my shoulders all the way down to how long I wanted my dress and I got 46 inches, okay? So what I had to do was hack. I'm gonna leave the bodice as is, no modifications there. And then after the bodice and the ruffle, I had to determine how much I need for the tears, which was 26 inches. So what I did was I knew that uh, first, the first and the second tier are the same height. So I wanted to make sure that tier one and tier two is still the same height. And then I played around with tier three and four. So I am making my first two tiers, tier one and tier two at four and a half inches when um, the seam allowance is removed. So that means I removed from the top an inch and a half for both pattern pieces, 12 and 13. For pattern piece number 14, I removed two inches from the top, which now it gives me, once the seam allowance is removed, it gives me seven inches top to bottom, all right? And then the fourth tier was 12 inches. Um, originally, after the seam allowance is removed, I needed this to be 10 inches, so I removed uh, two inches from the top as well, all right? So that's the modifications that I have made. So let me show you some behind the scene of sewing this dress together. All right, so I have the front pattern pieces and the back pattern pieces on the table, which is pattern piece number one. Of course, I'm gonna need pattern piece number two, which is my left front, pattern piece number four, five, and six. Um, pattern piece number three is just your front band, so you don't need that. So pattern piece number one, which is the bodice right front and the bodice side front. So what I did was I just basically measured because on the bodice side front, it shows the bust measurement. It does not show that for the bodice right front. So what I did was this side right here is going to be attached to this side right here. So because of that, I, all I did was I put it right sides together and I marked my, I already know where my waistline is. I just marked basically where my bust line is going to meet up, which is right here. Also, what you can do is take your measuring tape and measure from the bottom up to where that line is. Mine was seven and five eighths. So what I did was I marked seven and five eighths on my pattern. And then I just measured that seven and five eighths from the bottom up to mark that seven and five eighths right here on the bodice right front. And then I did the same thing for the bodice back and the bodice side back. So all, th all four pieces, you need to make a note of seven and five eighths of an inch from your waist. Now, how will you determine your waist on um, the bodice side back since it doesn't have a waistline? So what I did was I measured from the bottom to that waistline that's on the back. So what I did was I measured from the bottom up and it looks like about a half of an inch, but it's hard to tell with a measuring tape. So get a ruler and it looks to be roughly about, about five eighths. So since this waistline is measuring at five eighths from the bottom, I'm gonna make a note on my pattern, five eighths of an inch. I'm gonna me measure the five eighths of an inch from the bottom 
and mark a waistline there. Then from the bottom, I'm gonna measure up the seven and five eighths and make a line for bust line. You're going to do the same exact thing for the bodice left front um, there as well. So after I do that, I'm going to make an adjustment to my pattern. And the reason why is simply because the finished bust measurement for me, they all fall outside of what I need. So even though I'm going to cut aside 16, which gives me 40 and a half, I need to enlarge this pattern at least three inches in the bust to give me 43 and a half. For the waist, this fits my waist perfectly because my waist is a 32 on most days. Sometimes it's 33. So it's 32 and a half. So I would like to enlarge my waist by one inch as well. So the only pieces that I would have to enlarge would be my bodice front and my bodice back. I will not need to add any um, extra room for the side front or the side back whatsoever. Just make sure that if you're doing any type of adjustment, you're going to make that adjustment to your bodice right front, your bodice left front, and the bodice back. So if you need to make any adjustments, make it to these three pattern pieces now. All right, so I have all of my pieces cut out. Well, not all of them, just the bodice portions cut out for today. So this is day number one of probably two to three days to do this. Um, so I have my pattern piece one, two, three, four, five, and six cut out, which are the pieces for my bodice. Um, I had to interface pattern piece number one, two, and three. Um, just cut one of the interfacing as well. I did make slight modification to enlarge at the waist and the bust area. Um, but I am getting ready to start sewing up the main portions of the bodice. So let's go ahead and get into the bodice now. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and stay stitch the neck area and also this area right here in between the notches. And then I'm going to go ahead and apply my front band. So I'll do that and show you what it looks like. All right. So I attach my front to my front band. So this is my facing piece and I'm doing it at the same time so I don't have to run back and forth to the sewing machine. So the next thing I'm going to do is add the um, bodice side front to the non-facing piece. So I'm just going to move my facing out of the way because I don't need it at this second. So I'm going to take pattern piece number four, which is the side front, and I'm going to attach it to my front. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm just gonna take one and attach it to my side front. I'm gonna move this one out the way because it will go to the other one. So I'm just gonna pin it right here, matching up the notches and sew it together. And I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so now that I have my front band attached to my front and my side front attached to my back, I'm gonna move this out the way and start constructing my back right before I do the um, ties that goes right here on the front. So before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on my left front. So this is my right front. I'm gonna start working on my left front now. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so I have my pattern piece number two, which is my bodice left front and my side front right here, which is pattern piece number four. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move the one that's interfaced off to the side because I don't need it at this time. Um, and what I'm going to do is with right sides together, this is pattern piece number two and pattern piece number four. With right sides together, I'm just going to pin it, matching up the notches and then sew this seam right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and finished off my um, left front and I went ahead and did my tie ends. So what I'm going to do is it wants me to pin the tie ends to the right front. So I'm going to do that. And what it will look like is here's the front. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dot where that dot is and I'm basically going to match up the 
this dot with this dot right here and I'm going to pin. And then all I'm gonna do is just base across. All right, so I'm gonna do that to that. And then on this side, let me show you this one. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm just going to, there's a dot right here. And what I'm going to do is just match that up like so, where that dot is, match it up. And then I'm just going to pin and hold that in place, okay? Match that up, pin, and then I'm just gonna baste it because what's gonna happen is it's going to be like that when it's done. All right, so um, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And then after that, I'm gonna start working on my back pattern piece. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and did my tie ends for both my right front and my left front. I'm gonna go ahead and move this off to the side. I'm going to grab my back pieces. So I am going to be grabbing my bodice back and my bodice side back and with right sides together. I'm going to definitely pin the side back to the bodice back. So what that looks like is this is the wrong side. So I'm gonna pin this one over to that side, matching up the notches right here. But I did go ahead and stay stitch the neck edge and along the side of my bodice back. And then I'm going to do the same thing here where I'm going to pin, matching up the notches, the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so now that I have my um, side back attached to my back, now what I'm going to do is with right sides together, I am going to pin my bodice right and my bodice left at the shoulder seams and at the side seam. So this is the wrong side. So I'm going to pin the shoulder seams right here and the side seam. And then I'm gonna do that for the bodice left as well. So this is what it's going to look like. Right sides together. So I'm gonna pin at the shoulder seams and attach at the shoulder seams and the side seam, and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so now that I have the front bodice portion done, all right, this is the pattern that I'm using. One thing that I notice is that my bodice right is actually my bodice left, and my bodice left is like my bodice right. It ended up being on the opposite side, and I'm fine with that. I don't know how, I don't know if it's a, you know, instructions or whatever, not sure. I'll figure it out at a different time. Um, the only thing left for me to do tonight is to go ahead and do my facing piece and then I'll go ahead and start working on the skirt tomorrow. So let's go ahead and do this um, quick facing piece and I'm gonna show you exactly what I'm going to do and then that's it. So basically this is the um, pattern piece number eight, which pattern piece number eight is the back facing. And then what I'm going to do is just with right sides together, I'm going to pin my um, front facings to my back facings with right sides together. So that's what I'm gonna do. So this is, this one's going to go on this side and this one's going to go on this side like this. And then I'm just going to pin it and sew it together. And that's all I'm going to do. So basically I'm just gonna pin at the um, neck edge and sew it together. And that will be my facing to attach to my bodice tomorrow. And that's all that I have for today. Stay tuned for tomorrow when I continue working on this. All right, so you guys, Last night when I finished, this was day number two. Last night when I finished, I went to bed and woke up this morning. And I was like, you know what? I am not going to leave my bodice the way that it is on the opposite side. So what I came downstairs and did because I have to get to work here in about an hour. So I have about an hour to um, correct this right quick. So what I did was repin everything and I'm going to re-sew the um, 
bodice right front to the band over again and everything should be fine after that. So I'm gonna do that and show you what it looks like after I attach this. I'm gonna attach the strap and then um, attach the right and the left bodice front to the back and then um, continue from there because today we'll be doing the skirt which I will not be filming because it's a lot of tears that I have to do so before I do the skirt I should do the sleeve so I will try to go ahead and do the sleeves today and then do the skirt maybe later on tonight or whatever because today is Thursday the 14th of April all right so let me go ahead and do this I'll show you what it looks like and then I'll start working on the sleeve so let me get to it now all right so I um, completely have my bodice done. So if you want to know is I went ahead and basically took the bodice apart, the front pieces, the right front and the left front, because like I have said in so many tutorials, you must cut your um, fabric the way that it shows on the cutting layout. Reason being is because I did that, however, I marked the wrong side of my um, back pattern piece when I cut it out. So everything was sewn correctly. However, when it was time to put everything together, this side was on this side to where instead of me pinning to the left, I would have had to pin, I would have had, instead of the buttons going to the left when it's done, it would have been to the right opposite side. And I didn't want that. I wanted all my buttons to be on the left side versus the right side. So I went ahead and took everything out and basically started all over again, kind of started all over again. Okay. So that's what I did. Um, and to show you the amount of fabric that I wasted, I had to recut this again. I had to see that's two times that I completely messed up. So this was the third cut and now it worked. I had to do the same thing for the um, front pattern piece as well. The front, I had to cut it a second time. So I had to redo everything because I already interfaced that piece. So just make sure you are reading what you need to do. Now this is considered an average pattern and because it's considered an average pattern, that means you need to know a lot of details in order to do stuff like this and the amount of work it takes to, you know, do these type of uh, garments. Now, another thing I want to show you before I start working on my sleeves today, because I have a lot of work to get done, um, to have this done by, uh, Easter. Um, so, one thing I did was because I didn't want to surge, do a lot of surging, um, I finished off my facing area with bias tape. Now this was just some Ankara fabric that was in my stash that's in a box of Ankara fabric that I am cutting five by five inch squares to make a skirt out of. Later on when I have enough uh, scrap fabric, I will go ahead and make that skirt. So I just used some of it in order to put around my facing and then I tacked the facing down at the shoulder seams. I just basically went across the back portion of it so it could stay instead of flopping up every time I wear it, okay? So this is the bodice so far and I also put in my label um, basically in the back part of my dress. Now that the bodice is completely done, I'm going to move that off to the side and I'm going to start working on the sleeves, starting with the pleats. So I'm going to go ahead and make the pleats um, for the sleeves. After I make the pleats, I'm going to go ahead and sew with right sides together. So the um, underarm seams. After I do that, I am going to put in the sleeve stay right here, which is pattern piece number 11. And then I'm going to do, after I do that, I don't know, I'm not looking at the instructions. So this is the sleeve stay, I'm sorry. So this is the sleeve, sleeve stay, I'm gonna do that. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this at the bottom of the sleeve stay. That's for your sleeves to stay up, okay? So I'm gonna do all of that today and I'll sh take you through the journey of what it looks like. So the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the pleats in the sleeves and then move on from there. So I'm gonna take you along for that process. So let's go ahead and get into it today. This is day number three, all right? So today is Friday, April 15th.
All right, so we are back and I finished doing the pleats on the sleeve. So what I'm going to do at the sewing machine is I'm going to uh, create gathering stitches from dot to dot and then I'm gonna sew the under arm seams with right sides together, five eighths of an inch seam allowance, and then search my seam, and then attach my sleeve to my, well, before I attach my sleeve to my bodice, after I sew the side seam, I'm gonna go ahead and start preparing my um, stay. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and I'll come back and show you what it looks like. All right, so this is my sleeve stay, which is pattern piece number 10. Pattern piece number nine is your sleeve. So on um, step number 35, it tells you to pull up some gathers at the bottom edge, which I did that. And then it tells you to go ahead and do um, make your, which is your guide for your stay. You're going to pin around, but it looks like the wrong side is to the inside of matching up those dots all the way around. So it looks like what I have to do is pin the um, dots is the best way of putting it. And then I need to make sure that this other dot matches up with this dot right here. And I'm going to pin there. And then I need to make sure that my gathers are um, pulled up enough to where it will fit all the way around. And then once I do that, I'm going to pin and basically just base this in place all the way around. All right. So I'm just going to pin all the way around and I'll show you what it looks like. All right. So now that I have my uh, guide for my sleeve stay done, I have it all pinned around. Now you do not want to secure it by way of a stitch whatsoever because you need to slide this stay into your sleeve. So this is my sleeve where you see the pleats. And what I'm going to do is keep my sleeve with the wrong side out and then I turn my sleeve stay with the right side out. I'm going to place my sleeve stay inside of my sleeve and I'm going to match it up at the underarm seam and pin all the way around. So what you wanna do is make sure that your double notches for the back match up. If it does not, then you have the wrong sleeve. So I'm going to make sure that it's matching up all the way around and then I'm going to pull up the gathers at the bottom and then stitch it together at the bottom, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do that and show you what it looks like here short. All right, so I went ahead and attached my sleeve stay to my sleeves. I stitched all the way around, I trimmed it down. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and understitch the sleeve stay. So basically I'm gonna make sure all my seam is pressed towards the sleeve stay and then um, understitch on the sleeve stay. And then I'm gonna, going to turn it in encasing that and edge stitch all the way around. I'll show you what it looks like once I do it. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so I went ahead and did the sleeve stay. So what I need to do now is just basically turn it right side out. So when you look at it, this is what it looks like. You're going to just basically, it's going to look like this, which looks weird. I know, I know, but just bear with me on it. All right, um, so what you have is you have your sleeve right here. You have your sleeve, and then you have the sleeve stay on the inside of it. So you don't have any raw edges whatsoever. And this is what your sleeve is looking like. You wanna make sure that you give it a good press because it's gonna give that nice effect. So I'm going to just kind of put my arm in and it's going to look something like this. So I'm gonna to try to show you on camera. It's gonna look something like that, all right? So that's what it's looking like so far. So I'm going to add both of my sleeves now onto my bodice and then show you what it looks like. All right, so I have the entire bodice done and it is looking amazing. I am so excited. So both sleeves are done. These puff, these sleeves. Ah, you talk about making a statement, honey, yes. Love it, the pleats are done in the sleeve. Everything is looking amazing so far. Everything is finished off. So I'm gonna have this hang on my 
um, dress form for a little bit so I could work on my skirt because I only have two more days left. <laughs> well, not even two more days, like a day and a half. Okay, not even a half a day because it's late at night. It's a little after 1030 on a Friday night and I'm getting ready to work on my skirt a little bit because I have about 45 minutes to do so um, until I decide to go to bed. And then tomorrow I'm going to finish up my skirt as well because it's a lot of ruffle. So I want to make the tears today and let it hang and then I'll uh, put on the ruffles tomorrow. So that's the plan. So I feel like the ruffles part's not gonna take me any more than roughly about 45 minutes to make. Hopefully I don't run out of thread and we're going to get to it. So let me move this off to the side and start working on my ruffles and I'll show you what it looks like once the dress is complete because this will be the end of me showing you what I have done until the finished product. So now you have to wait until the finished product. So there you have it. That is the entire pattern review and behind the scenes of creating this dress. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on the notification bell so you are notified every time I upload a new video. Also, I will definitely make sure to put the photos of this dress and my Easter festivities during the April sewing make. So stay tuned for next week when I show you my April sewing makes. So until next time, keep sewing.